Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, that covers up for this Nick section. Now we can get into the NFL talk. If you've made it to this far, this long in the podcast, salute to you. We really appreciate you guys. So let's get into this NFL talk just because I know JD's dying to talk about it. We're <laughs> Jets fans. He's a Giants fan. It's getting to talk to, to the other side. It's getting to talk to the, the New York City brethren of football team. So let's get this thing cracking. JD, you are we, – we, we already know. You made a lot of football analogies. Today. A lot of NFL analogies. <laughs> I do it on Nick's Fan TV all the time. <laughs> so what are you feeling, bro? What are you feeling for your Giants? Who do you want them to take in this draft, man? Um, what are you, what's, what's, what's supposed to pull back? Let's pull that back a little bit. How do you – what is the state of affairs right now for Giants fans moving forward right now? After free agency, how are you, how are you feeling? Well, Tyrod um, Taylor. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tyrod Taylor, um, Mike Lewinsky is going to be our new starting right guard coming from the Colts. Um, we made some minor um, signings. I, I, nothing, nothing too notable. John Feliciano, who's going to play center now, coming from the Bills. We've signed Matt Breda, Speedster. Mm -hmm. Uh, running back has average. Pick. That's my almost, favorite pick so far. Yeah, he's averaged almost five yards per carry throughout his whole career. Um, he just hasn't gotten that extended opportunity. Maybe he'll get it here, uh, but also coming from the Bills. So I think right now what you're seeing is what you see when there's a, a rebuild, you know, um, low key, you know, minor signings, and you're looking forward to the draft and, 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 you know, the draft being your main source of, of just building the roster. And, and when the new GM, you know, this is a big offseason for, for the Giants just because we've introduced a new GM, we've introduced a new head coach, uh, new scouts, new everything for the most part. And, um, and so we're, go we're going to start this new era. And, and what a better way to start it than having two picks in the top eight. And, and, and then also, you know, going into headlines with the quarterback position, is Daniel Jones the future quarterback, um, et cetera, et cetera. He's not. He's not. Um, Mr. Turnover, that's what we call him on this pod. <laughs> take, take, it, take it easy, man. I've been paying over here. You know, I'm trying. You know, take it easy. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Come on. I, I, Sam I need, it's okay, bro. Listen, we know how listen, it is. Listen, JD, this is my issue, man. I need to hear some Daniel Jones slander from Giants fans. Like, how can you guys tolerate the guy who's addicted to turnovers? Like, I, that, that's what I don't get. Like, I don't John, get why you John, guys John, him. Let's Stop. not be so harsh, bro. Let's not be so – we were we, – no. we, we did love Sam Darnold. <laughs> wait, wait, am, am I on a uh, am I on a New England Patriots podcast? Is this the Tampa Bay – is this the Rams podcast? Is this the Tampa yeah. Bay oh, Buccaneers oh, podcast? Like, 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 you guys are going so in, but I'm like, wait, is no, this – I'm just asking. <laughs> I never hear Giants fans be realistic, dude. I never hear Giants fans be realistic about Daniel well, you're talking to And I thought this would one. be the year. I thought this would be the year. For someone to be like, oh, we don't know about Daniel Jones. I like will say this. This is this is the year. Um, <laughs> these because I'm fully confident at the five or seven, the Giants will draft an offensive lineman. Andrew Thomas going into another year, uh, where he proved that he could be the future left tackle of the Giants. And I just think, you know, I just think there's gonna be enough, there might not be enough roster moves to give him everything that you would need. Um, just because you don't do it in one off season, we don't have any cap space this year. We will have cap space next year. Um, but I think you'll have enough to evaluate him because you'll have Mike Kafka, who's the offensive co coordinator coming from the Chiefs. So you have that dynamic. You mix that up with Brian Dable, right? And, and, and then you have Joe, Joe Shane as the, as the GM. So you have that infrastructure there of creativity, modern, you know, when they want to talk about the modern offense and all that stuff. Then they, you're going to address the offensive line, I think, enough to give him that. You still have Saquon Barkley coming healthy. Uh, we'll see Kenny Galladay in a new year being healthy under a new system. Okay, there is Tony, who when he did play, he was making a lot of people look silly out there trying yeah. to tackle him. So can he be our version of, of like Tyreek Hill or something like that? We'll see. So there's enough, and there's going to be enough, I believe, after this draft to evaluate Daniel Jones and see if he's the guy. I, I'm, I'm 50, 50 on it. I think, you know, if I had to pick, maybe he's probably not the answer, but I also don't want to go into the season saying definitely no, without giving him that type of environment that I think he'll get this year. As far as, um, you know, the draft picks, I, listen, man, I, I think a lot of it depends on what the Jets do. So Ooh. wait, can, can we do a little mini mock draft here? Yeah, we can do it. Let's do, do it real quick. 
you you are doing a little bitty much. So so who do we have going number one to the Hutch. think they're going Hutch? Yeah. Is that consensus, Alex? Who's going going number one? Hutchinson. For who? Hutchinson for Jacksonville. <sighs> Things are changing, man. They're even saying Neil may go number one to no, no, Jacksonville. No, no, no. Chill out, chill out. They, they, I'm just, I'm just saying, bro. Yeah. I'm saying like that's some of my graphs are out there, but I think Hutchinson should be the number one overall pick because of who he is. So, all right. So we have Hutchinson number one. So next we have the, the Detroit Detroit Lions. This is where it gets sketchy for me. The next two picks are really where it gets sketchy for me. I have no idea what Detroit and Houston are gonna do, man. What do you I mean? Think? Some. Whew, I think it all comes down to. Do they go Malik Willis here? Because he's getting a lot of wow. hype. Wow. Do they you say really think that they might? I'm just saying, do they think that, you know, do they go there? Um, if not, wow. if not, crazy. I think their options are Kyle Hamilton, Kayvon Thibodeau, or Trayvon Walker. I think it'll be one of those three guys wow, if they don't go quarterback. Yep. Ooh, I, all right. Who, who's it's the, the Lions because I just think that the way that everyone's doing it is never going to happen. So there's always going to be that surprise pick. I think Trayvon Walker could be that surprise. I think it's top five pick. I think he'll be that surprise guy that kind of falls he, to the his, He has skyrocketed. I mean, yes. he had the best combine probably ever as at, at his position, running a four five forty. It's ridiculous. He's running safety speed and he's a defensive end. So they may look at him as like that little Micah Parsons type, draft him at number two. So I'm going to go Trayvon Walker. Mm. Wow, with the number two pick, defensive end, defensive end, like that, and not Kayvon? I think right. they go with I'll Who roll you got? With it. I'll roll with it. You got Kayvon? No, honestly, the, the, the Detroit Lions need everything. <laughs> and do you pick a safety that high positional no, value? You're the number. That's what I'm saying. Think, to me, it's either you're going DN or you're going with the quarterback, going with the home run play. I could see the quarterback stuff just because they're paying so much to Goff. But if I'm them, dude, I'm taking I'm taking Evan Neal. I'm just calling it a day because if even if I'm wrong, it's okay because I took Evan <laughs> Neal and he's an offensive tackle from Alabama, <laughs> and mm. you know I, I I can't go wrong. That's if I'm them, that's what I'm doing. Man, or I can't believe that 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 it's just hard for me to believe that like Malik Willis is now the guy. You know what I mean? That's, He's not to me, but you know how this so works. Weird. I know every I know. year quarterbacks Ian get over drafted. Two quarterbacks in the top ten now. Yeah, really said that with today. Kenny Pickett, with Kenny Pickett and, and Willis That's, because of their pro that more than because of their pro days. Pro. Okay, fine. Let's go, Malik Willis. All right, Malik Willis, number two, number three, the Houston Texans. And don't cheat because the Jets are next and you want to know. Who do you think the Houston Texans are picking? I, if I'm the Houston Honestly, Texans, I take Aquanu. If it, it's either Aquanu or Evan Neal. He's got to go at this point. Like mm. I would take Aquanu. I would take Aquanu if I'm Houston. He's a generational tackle and he can move to guard. What else do you want? I Actually, let's go with that because I would in, under this scenario, I'm very interested to see what the Jets do if Aquanu is picked before them. So let's yeah. go Equano number three. The yeah. New York. This sucks. <laughs> yeah. This sucks. Are, are on the clock. Yeah. Ooh, you got Evan Deal. You have Kayvon Thibodeau. You have Kyle Hamilton. Sauce Gardner. The, the, Sauce that's Gardner. the consensus. I don't, I don't know if you're, if you've been part of the, the Jets yeah. Twitter pool. We like I, yeah. the group think, right? So once one person says one thing, we all agree. Over the last the week, it's been Gardner at four. Like now it's Sauce Gardner at four, right? So I think it's one of those four players. Who who are you going, Alex? I'm just thinking about what the Jets need because we've already had the reports of saying, well, we got DJ uh, playing the one and Bryce Hall, Brandon Eccles, all those guys aren't necessarily designated twos and they're more on the cusp of being threes. They could be twos, but they could also be threes. There's also the need for... I'm questionable if they want to go safety again because they've addressed they addressed it through free agency. I don't know if they want to do that again. Although Kyle Hamilton is a talent, I don't know if you want to pass up on a guy like that. The other thing is that I could see us wanting, like Aquano was the one that the Jets have been high on. If he's gone, I could see wanting Neil, but I don't see them just trying to take 
a tackle for the sake of taking a tackle and then make it more cluttered after we just got all these other guys at tackle yeah. right now. Um, unless you really feel like moving George Font. That's the question. But I don't think they're that high on necessarily doing that. Equino gives you more versatility to play him right yeah. now. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly going to go Sauce Gardner. I think Sauce Ooh. Gardner is probably going to be that guy just because I know. I'm not thrilled about it, but I think that's what they might do. Um, I think that they would do that man, too. You messed me on dream up. I think that I think I, honestly, I think that they would do that too. I as I'm I'm honestly, mess my if dream it's me, up. if it's me personally, I'm taking Kyle Hamilton right in this spot because, in my opinion, I know it's not the most popular opinion, but I I've been watching Sauce Gardner tape. I watched Cincinnati a lot this year. Unfortunately, uh, they were they were nice against the spread. Anyway, he's a bully. He bullies if players. If he can translate line. that to the NFL, it's over. But can he though? Like, like he's he's gonna be the number one. He's gonna be the shutdown corner. He's gonna be six two, and he's gonna be staring at receivers like this, bro. Like you know, I mean, like it, it's no longer you know the five eleven guy from Toledo. And so that's my issue with the whole thing. He's a bully. He's nat. He's a nasty player at the line. I lo- I love to see it. I just I don't think he's as good as everyone thinks he is. And so if it was me, I'm taking Kyle Hamilton. But for purposes of this mock, uh, let's go sauce. All right. So number five, there's not much to say. You guys, he fell into our laps. Evan Neal, Easy. franchise right tackle, putting him at the right. Andrew Thomas at the left. And that's that. That's easy. And number six with the Panthers, I think here they either go under this mock, they're going either Charles Cross, the tackle, or they're yes. going Kenny Pickett, the quarterback. Mm-hmm. I think they got to go Charles Cross. What do you got? For me, for number six, yeah, I think I think Cross is the answer. I think he's he's a he, he's a guy that 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 really flew up uh, within the last couple of days. I mean, uh, Pickett, Pickett could be another guy that they can go if they want to like take a quarterback. Because I'm not necessarily sure if they want to stick with Sam Darnold, but if you're taking Pickett, might as well just trade back at that point. Honestly, but it's the Panthers. Panthers do stupid things, so I don't really I think, care. I think Cro- <laughs> I think Cross is the guy, and then. In that case, your boy falls right into your lap, man. Trayvon Walker. Well, in this case, are you taking Kyle Hamilton? I think, wow. Now I'm on the spot because I wanted Gardner. I got Neil, but on the board, I have Kayvon Thibodeau. Yep. And I have Trayvon Trayvon Walker. Walker, And you got Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton. (laughs) That's nice. I think. I love that right now. I I'm might, right I now, as a Jets fan, as a Jets fan, I'm hyped right now, right? Because I'm at ten, you're at seven. I can't lose because you have those three guys. Plus, we got my main man, and we're, we're gonna name him at tech because we were taking it no matter what. Mm. <laughs> go ahead. I think I personally would probably go Hamilton for mm. Wink Martindale's defense. I, agree. I think because he blitzes over fifty percent of the time. I would um, you orchestrate the rush with the blitz, and 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 then you have him and Xavier McKinney out of Alabama who had five interceptions last year. Probably would have made the Pro Bowl if the if the Giants would have had any semblance of a decent record. Um, but I think if Kayvon is on the board, I don't see the Giants passing on him because of the whole I trenches agree. and their you know the whole position thing. So I'm okay. going to go with Kayvon Thibodeau. I would probably go Hamilton, but I'll go with Kayvon Thibodeau there. That, okay. That's such a Giants draft, bro. Evan Neal and Thibodeau. Yep. Two players I want nothing to do with. You know, that, it, it makes perfect sense. Well, I'm not you got two potential at some point in terms of mocks and, and projected. Two potential number one picks fall into yep. you at five and seven. You can't. You can't. So so then if, this, if it's at this point, I think the Hawks go Kyle Hamilton. I feel like the Hawks are that team. No, it's the Falcons. I mean, Fal- that's what I mean. Falcon, sorry. I was going to say, well, wait, wait, is Trey Young in the war room? <laughs> yeah, Trey Young's in the war room. Might as well be, bro. Birds, they're all dirty birds down there. I don't know. Uh, Falcons. Falcons, Falcons take they- Kyle Hamilton. They're going to do that. You think so? Or do they go wide receiver? They literally don't have wide receiver. Nah, man. I think they're going to take top. I think this team has shown anything. Like, they took uh, they took the tight end last year. They just took – they go for top talent. That's how this te- – that's how this uh, front office likes to operate, it seems like. 
So if they're going to take Kyle Pitts last season when it just didn't make sense, I think they'll do the same thing with Kyle Hamilton. And they'll go. I think they might ball. because I think if Gardner gets there, I think they, they would pick Sauce Gardner, but he's not on the board. So we, we could roll with, with Kyle Hamilton. Number nine. One more. We'll go to 10 for the Jets, and then that's it. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, we're not doing the entire thing. That's right. <laughs> uh, of, course, of course, of course. That's the point. We're getting just the 10. We're getting to 10. Kayvon who's, who's Thibodeau nice probably goes here for Seattle. Well, I picked him. No, he's, he, went, he went to the Giants. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so you have Trayvon, unless you want to go to Trayvon Walker mm. or Jermaine Johnson. Don't say Jermaine Johnson because that's my pick at 10. So for purposes <laughs> of mock draft, you better not go nine. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, if, if both of those players go 9-10, I'm good with that. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm good with that. So in our in our little mock draft here to end, Seattle. you Ooh. got you got Neil and Tibbs, and we oh no, another Tibbs. And you love Tibbs. And <laughs> you, get Gardner, you get Gardner and a defensive end in either Trayvon Walker or uh Jermaine Johnson from FSU. And then we're probably going to trade the two second round picks and the third pick for, for AJ Brown. I think they go D and a tackle here. For Seattle? Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, so, I, I, got, I, I got to keep watch on is uh, Penning. Yeah, I was going to uh, say either, to honestly, realistic, I think they go Walker, Penning, or Jermaine Johnson here. But the, the last Davis. note, though, the last note is Ian Rapport and said two quarterbacks in the top 10. This would be the last pick in the, in the 10. Yeah, they could do that too. Unless they just want to run with Geno Smith. You know, that's a good option too. <laughs> All right, so Sauce Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, I'm down. You take Evan Neal and Tibbs, I'm, I'll, I'll be hyped going into day two. So so who, who are you going with, Alex? For the Jets? No, no the Hawks. The, the Hawks, Seahawks. Um, I'm probably going with someone. I think Jordan Davis might be a guy that they go with too. Like uh, just fill out that interior line for them. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Nah. No? I would go defensive end or quarterback here. I'll go Trayvon Walker here. Trayvon right. Walker? I will end it with Jermaine I'll go Johnson. With Trayvon. I'll go with Trayvon Walker. Oh, that's yeah. fair. I like that So, one. at number 10, it's interesting. I haven't said anything. And, John, I don't know how you feel, Alex, but John has been saying, Jermaine Johnson, Jermaine Johnson is the pick, which means your draft was just Sauce Gardner and Jermaine Johnson after you just – Went through a heartbreaker for Tyreek Hill after you just were in hot pursuit for a wide receiver. You guys don't go with a wide receiver here at 10? Honestly, bro, in this draft, I feel like Douglas just showed I'm trying to get some weapons for for Zach Wilson. So here's here's my thought. Those guys are established wide receivers that he's going after. I don't see any wide receiver in this draft that really comes onto the field and makes a name like a CeeDee Lamb or even a Jerry Judy. There's no one like that. Waddle. Yeah, there's no one like that. There's no one like that in this draft. I feel like if you go in the top t- – trying to take a wide receiver in the top 10, I feel like that's a reach for just trying to fill a need. So might as well just take the defense, especially since we've gone offensive heavy in free agency and even last season through the draft. And you got to get Robert Sala some guys that he can work with. So fill out that edge – Someone opposite of Carl Lawson, and then fill out that uh, secondary too. You're gonna to need another cornerback. So if you don't believe in Price Hall and all those guys, I feel like that just makes a sense for for all of them. Yeah, man. There's some there's some wide receivers in this draft. It's it's a, it's a pretty deep class. Like you got Christian Watson, you got Sky Moore later on. I mean, I love Burks for this team. You know, Drake London's fine, but I don't see us really spending a premium pick up there. Someone you say drops. Burks. Yeah, he's nice. Too many. We got Thibodeau, Burks, Ryan. Hold on. Draft. CP, CP just texted me. Did someone say Alec Burks? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Too you much. Know, C, CP's radar is always up there when it comes That's to hilarious. Burks. Oh, That's man. hilarious. But, yeah, also, dude, don't sleep on Joe Douglas still making a, a move, dude. AJ Brown's out no, there. No Kyle Hamilton here? Well, he went He went to the Falcons, so. Yeah, yeah. I love Kyle. Dude, I love Kyle Hamilton, man, so. You, 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 he, we did not address the, the, the free safety. So you guys are saying Jeremy Johnson here? Hell yeah. That's an easy one for me. Interesting. Interesting. Well, there you have it. Jeremy Johnson, go. Sauce Gardner, Evan Neal, Kayvon Thibodeau. There you, there you go. have it. 
and two the Zags in lost. the state of New York. Look at that. And, two and Tibs the, in the state uh, of New York. And the Zags just lost, boys. Unbelievable. Oh, man. One with a motor question and another one with a substitution question. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, of course. Oh, man. Yo, this is a good place to end it, guys. Yo, JD, thank you for coming on, my man. Appreciate it. Please let the listeners know where they can find you, any work that you're co- coming out, everything. Uh, well, uh, they could definitely find me on Twitter at JD Sports Talk NY. Um, and then you can also see me on Knicks Fan TV for the post game show. So uh, the Knicks Fan TV uh, channel. I do have my own channel, but I've been focusing on the Knicks Fan TV platform. So find me on Twitter, find me on Knicks Fan TV. And uh, yeah, let's go, Knicks. Let's go, Giants. Thank you guys for having me. It was a blast. We got to talk a little bit about everything. Um, I need and, to yeah. ask you one thing. I need to ask you yep. one thing before you go. Real quick, real quick. Baker Mayfield, yes or no? No. Is this a family show? Because I was going to say, <laughs> heck no. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. You can curse right? whatever you Hell want. Hell no. Man. Hell no. All right. Hell no. You, you can say, fuck shit. No one gives a d- damn on this podcast. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hell no. All right, deal. All right, guys. Well, JD, if you guys haven't checked out JD yet, make sure to catch JD on Knicks Fan TV. Make sure to go check out G- JD on Twitter where he gives you his takes. Just make sure to follow JD in general. Always great analysis. Man's primo when it comes to his analysis. If you can't tell from this podcast, man, I don't know what you guys are listening to then. <laughs> but thanks to JD for coming on. Appreciate it. And to everyone that's tuned in for this podcast, we appreciate you too. And I hope you appreciate the work we're doing. So you know what to do. Please make sure to subscribe to this podcast. We're on all audio listening platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, Alexa, Stitcher, you name it. We are there. If you listen to us on Spotify and Apple, please make sure to give us a five-star rating. And if you listen to us on Apple, make sure to leave a comment that just helps us out most so greatly. Guys, we're also on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Look for Knicks, comma, Jets, comma, ETC, period. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when a new episode drops. And when you watch a video, hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let us know what you guys' takes are. Let us know how you want to add to the conversation. We appreciate it. We'll respond. Don't worry about that. While you're over at the channel, we got Winning Picks Weekly. John, video producer Greg, they usually go down to the NFL slate. They do some NBA action, whether it's on ESPN, NBA TV, all right, ABC, TNT. It don't matter. They'll, they'll place their bets no matter what. So make sure to check these guys out. But they just did March Madness with our guy, Chip Murphy. So make sure to go check out the Sweet 16 and get all their takes over there. And last and, and certainly not and least. And the Zags has busted everyone's bracket. So just Oh, in. man. <laughs> and last and certainly not least. Yeah, I don't give a damn. My bracket was busted last week, bro. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> last and certainly not least, please make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You name it, we are there. Once again, thank you for JD for hopping on the podcast. And thank you for all listening. We out. Let's go next.